Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In today's tutorial, I just want to do a quick first look at the 3D Space Mouse. So I just picked this one up and I have been using it, so I wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, so one of the reasons why uh, I didn't pick this up right away is because uh, I kept seeing some reoccurring things in the reviews about it being a little bit to get used to, to get the hang of it. Uh, so uh, I didn't want to invest uh, extra time into learning a new tool when I could just do things much easier and faster with the S key and my mouse. Um, however, uh, I've been seeing folks that have one have some super smooth buttery uh, movement when they are uh, doing tutorials. And if you guys have seen my tutorials, uh, I've been known to kind of be a little sporadic when I'm uh, orbiting and rotating around objects. Uh, so I thought maybe this uh, might help my behavior and uh, smooth out some of my motion. It's a little laggy here, but uh, that's just my computer being slow. And it's uh, there's a lot of faces in this assembly. Uh, but yeah, I, so far I've been digging it. It feels pretty intuitive. I thought it'd take a little bit longer uh, than this to get used to. It comes with an interesting little app that has sort of a trainer app built into it. This is fun. Uh, it it kind of uh, separates panning, zooming, tilting, spinning, and rolling. Uh, so it does all that in one uh, in one uh, one knob here, which is really nice and intuitive, in my opinion. Uh, and this little trainer here just helps you kind of get this little teacup and move it and uh, and kind of practice with it, which I thought was pretty fun. So I sat here for a couple minutes uh, and played with that. Oh, I'm gonna spill my my hot water all over everyone. Cool, let's set it down on the table. Excellent, well that's the 3D mouse. There are some buttons that are built onto it. I have not mapped those yet or played with the sensitivity. That is all stuff that you can do with in the app. I just got it, so uh, I've been having fun with it. I heard it took forever to learn how to use it, but I'm, I just thought I'd share with you how intuitive it felt to me. So there you go. Uh, if you guys have any cool tips or any comments, please drop them in the section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Just kidding. I still have one more thing. I want to do a quick tip, uh, and that's keyboard shortcuts in Fusion 360. Yay. Um, I, I didn't know they had them until I saw someone um, uh, talk about them. So uh, new keyboard shortcuts. My favorite one that I created was the letter U for user parameters. So I'm always doing user parameters, so now I can open it with one key wherever I am. That's awesome, the U key. The way to set that up is uh, really any, any object inside any of these menus down here. Um, there, when you roll over it, there is these three dots that you click on, and then there are some options here. You can either pin it to the toolbar, to the shortcuts in the S key thing, or you can change the keyboard shortcut. You can assign one if there isn't one. You can do modifiers and all that sort of stuff. Reset to default, cancel, okay. That sort of stuff, so there you go. That is my quick tip that I almost forgot to give you guys. That is a big game changer for me. Uh, I thought this was awesome. Uh, what is another one I like? Uh, another one I like is the, the letter N for new component, because I'm always making components. So that one's a nice one. I hate coming up here and right clicking and hitting. Oh, I don't have to do that anymore. Excellent. Well, there you go. Uh, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, one last thing about that. I wish you could do home, go home. That would be nice uh, as a keyboard shortcut, but it doesn't seem like you can set that. Anyway, that's going to be it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, folks.